Hi folks, welcome back to another Teardown Tuesday. And today I think we have the biggest component I've torn apart yet. Uh, I don't know the whole story on this, but what we've got is a sealed up, never used scroll compressor. There's some damage to the base, you know, the, the heavy base plate down here where some of the fingers have been bent up but I don't know if it was ordered incorrectly or shipping damaged or what. But the thing is big. It's bigger than my teardown tray and my teardown space here. So we'll, we'll go over some of the labels and I'll cut the thing apart here and we'll start putting components out one by one so you can see them. So just looking at the label, you can see there's some interesting information on it for us. We've got some pressure ratings, we've got an oil description, We've got the amount, it's about three quarter liter of oil. Uh, we've got capacitor descriptions, we've got voltage descriptions. So we're a 230 volt single phase here with a locked rotor amperage of 55. And you've also got a couple notes about thermally protected and some of the other details on it here. And down along the side, we've got a model and serial number. So when we look at this scroll compressor we've still got three terminals the electrical connections and because it's single phase we, we're going to have a common a start and a run so that we can dump that start capacitor in and get that motor turned over so then we've got our ports here and the the smaller port up on top is our high pressure the larger port down on the body is the suction line coming back and so the low pressure return, the suction is, is the larger port on the body, and it just kind of dumps into that area. I think that's where the motor's at. And then the, the scroll mechanism's kind of here in between the two ports. And it's pretty neat. I think you'll like it. But before we cut this open and get inside it, let's take a minute here and just pull these caps out and see if this still is sealed. Uh, No, I didn't hear anything there. Let's try the other one here. No, nothing there. So there was no seal left in this. So let's go ahead and get it cut apart, see what's inside. All right, so we've got our top here and we've got a couple bolts these are inverted torques so you need a security socket to get these off you can see the torx head kind of comes out of the bolt so you got to use a security socket to get it out and then we've got the the top part of our scroll assembly here and there's a, a ton of oil in this so let's get that set on something here to soak that up And now here, you can start to see the scroll mechanism. So you can start to see the little intricate path there. And then this is the bottom piece that's actually driven that sits down inside here. And there's like a little bushing there that have an eccentric in it that rotates this assembly together. So here's the eccentric. And you can see it's, it's kind of square drive and off center. Sits down inside there. And the, the whole thing is held in a, a movement, held in a pattern with this frame, this aluminum frame. And that sits down in these little fingers and it, it acts like a guide. It keeps everything in the right position as it's moving around. So it's kind of gritty. There's some grinding dust in here from cutting it apart, but you can see how that slides back and forth. And then when that frame is dropped down into the, the upper piece of the scroll, it slides up and down. So it it limits our travel there as that eccentric rotates around. In here you can see there's a bushing. It's like a kind of yellowy oil light bronze kind of bushing. And that area has oil in it as well during operation. So inside this spiral path we're, we're creating this continuous squeeze with the refrigerant. It's, it's entering from the little port kind of in the 11 o'clock position. And as this moves around it creates a, a difference in volume as it moves through this spiral path and then pushes the high pressure refrigerant out through the center of that top piece. Uh, 
All right, so we put this back together. We kind of slot this back together and we kind of demonstrate the, the range of motion here. You can see it moving up and down. It's kind of stuck. It, it's a really precise fit here. So if everything's not perfectly situated, it won't slide freely. Yeah, so there you can see that that kind of movement, that range of motion that the scroll's going through and the, the guide plate kind of keeping it all restrained. So you can see this piece is really intricately machined, but it does not have any ports in it. This upper piece is where all our ports are. And when you look at the, the path here, this is where the refrigerant enters. The, the vapor is pulled in, and then it's, it's being pulled in and squeezed through this scroll mechanism and it's exiting down through this port in the very center. You can kind of see how there's a difference in color there. And that's our check valve. So when we flip it over, you can see the, the check valve kind of on top there, but then we've got this other piece, and I have never pulled a scroll compressor apart before, so this is kind of new to me too. But uh, see if we can get that further apart or maybe pop that out of there. Yeah, I think I can work that out of there. I think it'll come out. So let's try and get this pulled. Yep, there it goes. So this is like uh, a, some kind of seal plate. It's got O-ring seals on the inside and the outside. It looks like... Huh. So it looks like it's got a ceiling surface that presses up against the, the top of the, the body, that ceiling surface up there. And like it's got maybe a little hole in the, the scroll passage, like it's a piston and there's some pressure being bled off through this hole to the backside of this piston to kind of force it up and seal against the top of the housing. Yeah, I think that's what's going on there. So now if we look down inside here, down in the center, the, the valve is down in there, but there's also some kind of retainer here, and I don't know that I'm going to be able to get that out. I think it's like a spiral lock, which is like a, a spring clip that goes around itself more than once and expands once you put it down into a slot. Yeah, I might not be able to get that out. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get that out of there without completely destroying this thing. So that's the basic mechanism. That's the heart, right? The scroll mechanism. So let's let's look now at some of these other parts, uh, some of the other components that are inside this thing. So let's set that off to the side. Now, if we look at this top of the unit, we'll throw that piston over here real quick. There's a couple interesting things going on up here. And so when we're looking around, there's this little valve, there's a hole, but this entire top half is, is sealed. It's welded to make a separate compartment or, or chamber up there. And there's some oil up there too. And then there's this little plunger mechanism that's hanging down and it's, it's really hard to see, but there's like a plunger and a spring inside there. And there's a little hole next to it. Uh, it might be a, I think this is a pressure relief. And maybe the hole next to it is an oil drain back or a head pressure relief. All right, so if we look at the motor here, you can see the, the eccentric shaft coming up through the, the middle here. And that, the eccentric rides down inside there. They've dimpled the, the sides and press fit this motor down in. So it's really hard to get the thing out. You can, you can see the electrical connectors coming through or just like a regular hermetic piston compressor, or reciprocating compressor. They come through the housing there, and there's the connection. And then if I can get this in the frame, you can see down inside here the thermal overload tied down into the motor windings. It's actually inside this one, down in the windings. And then this thing over here is a, a piece that I dropped down inside. Let's fish that out real quick and get that out of there. 
And then up here, we've got our motor windings. You can see all those down inside. And then our motor shaft, this eccentric on the, the motor shaft that rotates. I'll rotate that a little bit here. You can see how that's off center, creates that rotary movement or motion. And there's a hole through the middle here, and that's an oiling hole. That's where the oil would be pumped up from the bottom. And then down kind of off to the side here, you can just barely see the oil return hole. Give that oil somewhere to go. And we can try and turn this and, and see if anything comes up. I don't think I can get it spinning fast enough here to, to get any oil to come up through there. Yeah, not, not having any luck there. Yeah, so let's, before we pack up here, you can see this ring that the eccentric rides in is also the, the mount for the scroll assembly. And those Torx fasteners go down through and create kind of a sandwich, hold the whole thing together on the end of the motor here. And then before we set this down, just look at the suction port real quick. That suction port just dumps into this open area around the motor. That's the, the low pressure side of the system. So if we're talking about principles of operation, we've got a motor. So we've got electromagnets that create rotation. It spins an eccentric and the eccentric rotates around our, our spiral assembly in a defined range of motion. And that rotating scroll movement creates a suction on the opening side and it creates high pressure in the center. So that continuous squeeze action and the high pressure dumps out through the top. And we've also got this little bleed port here and that pushes some pressure into the back of our piston. So that's uh, pressure over surface area to push that piston up and create the seal into our top cap or assembly. And then if we look up in the top here, we've got that relief valve, which is again pressure over surface area. So you plunger with a spring behind it. So if the pressure in the top hat here gets too high and overcomes the spring force on the other side of the little plunger, it cycles open and dumps back. So it's kind of a strange thing, right? It, until you see it all laid out like this, it's, it's a weird shape and a weird assembly. It doesn't really make a lot of sense until you can really see how that shape can squeeze. Now, if we talk about how it fails, it's like a typical compressor. Motor burning out's a big risk. If you don't have control over the atmosphere inside the system, it's got contaminants or water, moisture, any pieces physically floating around in it, it can get sucked in here. The, the clearances in this are really tight to make this work. And if anything gets pulled in, any physical object, it's going to crash this whole assembly. Uh, the other thing that can really kill these is liquid. If you were able to blow enough liquid in the suction side to flood this thing, the, the liquid would attempt to compress, and that liquid would shatter all these pieces. And, and that's a big failure mode for these. Uh, they also really don't like being run backwards. That tears them up too. So, as you can see from the teardown, we've got oil all over everything now. Got it all over these gloves. In fact, this may be the last teardown with these gloves because they're just kind of soaked with oil. But that, uh, that oil circulates around inside here. So it, it gets pulled up, used to lubricate the bushing in this little pocket here up through the, the motor shaft and then it gets kind of bled out through the side ports and, and falls back down on the bottom. We've got a lot of oil in the top hat here from the teardown, but I think that was from laying it over. And this little port, I'm not sure if this is a, a bleed for the oil to get back, if it does get up here, or if that port is um, like an unloader. So that's pretty much it. An interesting piece of equipment. Thanks for watching. Hi folks, my name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a SmartCare technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, 
please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.